Hello and welcome to the iRecovery Stick video tutorial on how to perform a recovery on iOS devices running iOS 14. Now this is an updated video because iOS 14 has introduced some new methods for us to be able to get more data from the devices. The specific way that we get more data is if the device is encrypted. So we're going to first talk about encrypted devices so you know the difference. Encrypted devices are devices that have been backed up using iTunes and using a password during that backup process. Once you do this, both the backup, iTunes backup and the phone itself become encrypted. If you don't have an iTunes backup that has a password on it for the device, then the device is not encrypted and neither is any backup file that you created without a password. Data encryption is actually very good for users to protect their data. However, it's also very good for people investigating uh, iOS devices if they have that iTunes backup password. So the process has changed to where the first thing we're going to do is to encrypt the device, creating our own password so we have that password, um, so we can access as much data as we can during the recovery process. Some of the data that we can recover from encrypted devices are call logs, health app data, saved internet passwords, Wi-Fi passwords, Siri voice commands. Now these are the uh, user commands, uh, recordings to Siri, and those are, can be very useful, and other miscellaneous data. Now this is on top of the regular um, user data that we can get um, with non-encrypted recoveries. We can get regular user data but with encrypted recoveries, we can get all this data as well. With non-encrypted recoveries, you are also going to be required to remove the password entirely, I'm sorry, the passcode entirely from the device, as well as any face ID or um, fingerprint ID. If you don't remove those, then we cannot access the data at all. So performing uh, recoveries on encrypted devices can actually be easier as, as well. In order to encrypt a device for recovery, um, we're going to create an iTunes backup file. So I'm going to walk you through that process now. First thing we're going to do is we're going to have you download and install iTunes from Apple. And you can do this from support.apple.com slash downloads slash iTunes. Now choose the uh, download that's best for your PC and your operating system. And once installed, go ahead and, and plug your device into your computer. Once you do this, you should see um, something pop up on the device screen that asks you to trust the computer. If this is the first time you've, you've plugged it into the computer, go ahead and tap the trust button and then open iTunes. When you open iTunes, you should see the connected device um, icon up here in the upper left corner. Uh, if you don't, you might need to reconnect your device and uh, make sure you do trust the device on the device screen. Um, once you see that icon, go ahead and click on that. And on this next page, you're gonna see this section for backups. And this is where you create your iTunes backup locally. Now you're definitely not gonna to wanna to back it up to iCloud because it won't create um, an encrypted iTunes backup file that you can access. So you need to do it to this computer by clicking this computer, click on encrypt local backup, once you click on that, it's going to ask you to enter in the password and re-enter it. You're going to create your own password for this, and it can be anything you want. You just need to be able to remember that password because you will use it uh, during the recovery. Now you can see uh, this screen's a little bit different because I've already created that, that password, so it's asking me if I want to change that password. And you can always create a new backup and change a password if you want. Um, but once you've entered the password for the uh, encrypted local backup, Click the Backup Now button and your backup will begin. This process can take a while, um, but it shouldn't take too long to be able to complete that backup. Once your backup is complete, we can now perform a recovery. We have two options for performing recoveries. We can perform a recovery on the iTunes backup file that we just created, or we can perform a recovery directly from the device itself. The only difference in data is going to be that the Direct recovery from the device will recover MP3 files, 
where iTunes backup recoveries will not have MP3 files. Also, if new data comes onto the device after your backup, um, say you do a backup and days later, um, phone calls and text messages and photos have been taken, those will not be in the backup because the backup um, is a snapshot in time of when you performed that backup. So if you want to back up from the device itself because new data is on there, um, we can show you, we'll show you how to do the backup as well from the device itself. There is an advantage to recovering from iTunes backup files that you do not need to have the device anymore. Once you've created that backup file, you no longer need to have the device in possession. So if you have limited time with a target device you're investigating, uh, the iTunes backup recovery is the best option for you. So to perform a recovery on the iTunes backup file that we just created, go ahead and plug your iRecovery stick into your computer and open the iRecovery stick app. When you open this for the first time, you'll be asked to install um, the app drivers or the device drivers. Go ahead and follow that process. Uh, once the drivers are, are installed, the device or the app interface will open up. To start a recovery from iTunes backup pass or files, we're going to click the start import from iTunes backup button here. And you're going to see this screen pop up. You won't see the same information yet. You need to navigate to the um, local backup file. To do this, you're going to click on the local disk C because the default location for the backup files in your C drive. Then you're going to click on the users folder then the username of the current user logged into the computer, then application data, then roaming, then Apple computer, then mobile sync, then backup. And here you'll see any backups that uh, from any Apple devices that are on this computer. And it's gonna have a random name for the folder. And you can see here, it can be really, really wild here, a bunch of numbers and letters. And each backup is going to have its, its unique uh, folder here. Open up the folder for the backup we just created and click the manifest.plist file. And you might have to scroll over to be able to see that file. And then click the open button. You'll be asked to enter in the password for the iTunes backup. Um, since you just created that password, you should, should easily remember it. Go ahead and enter that and click OK. And that's it. It will start to process um, the data and recover it from the iTunes backup file. So to perform a recovery from the device itself directly, uh, the process is similar. Um, we're going to plug the device into the PC. And if the device asks you to trust it, go ahead and click trust. That way it can establish a, a connection to the PC and we can see the data on it. Plug your iRecovery stick into the uh, PC and run the iRecovery stick app. Again, you might need to install the uh, drivers if this, is, if this is the first time you're running it. On the main screen here, we're going to click on Start Recovery. If your phone is connected properly to the computer, you're going to see it here as an icon. Now, if you have an iPad or something else, um, the icon is going to stay the same. It's just representative of a connected iOS device. If it isn't connected, then go ahead and try your, your uh, device again, connect it again, make sure you trust the device. Um, and if, if that doesn't work, you may need to try a different USB port or maybe even a different cable uh, because if we can't connect it directly to the PC properly then and Windows can't see the device, then neither can we. But once you see this, go ahead and click on the device we can uh, acquire different type of data. We can acquire either textual and multimedia data only or acquire all data, including the textual and multimedia data and third-party application data. This is where you're going to get most data in your recovery. However, this one is going to take a lot less time. Now, the time constraint on this is it can take up to 15 minutes per gigabyte of data on the device. Um, so if your device is full of MP3s and, and movies, um, it can take quite some time to perform the entire recovery directly from the device. Once you click on the type of data you want to acquire, 
it will ask you for the iTunes backup password that we created when we um, encrypted the device. Go ahead and click or enter that and click OK. And that's it. It will connect to the device and start backing up. Now, don't be discouraged if it takes some time to connect to the device. Um, it is de it's decrypting the, the information from the device, and that can take some time before it even starts the um, acquisition of the data. But that's it. That's how we acquire data from iOS devices using either iTunes backup files or directly from the device itself. In our next video, we will walk you through uh, analyzing the data that is acquired from the devices uh, so you can do your in-depth analysis. Thank you for joining me today.